The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman sitting in for this hour. Tommy's unable to make it, so I, I managed to free up some time. So we're we doing an hour now and an hour later for my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour. Of course, I'm not able to put the fundamentals together as well as Tommy does for his market kickoff, uh, together with the technicals. But let's do a couple of things right now. Uh, if you're looking at the Dow, this is a very unusual pattern to see it move up sharply from the 24th of February and then suddenly stall, make an H pattern successfully and then take one, two, three, four, five, six. And then finally on the seventh and eighth bar after that 34,179 uh, 34, high of about the 5th or 6th of March, finally it breaks out. It breaks out of a bunch of things. It breaks out of the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Look, at, look how it kept uh, being contained. But it also did something really fascinating, something that I've studied and looked at for not years but decades. You see that you see the time span between the 5th of January, where the Dow made his all-time high of 36,952, and a pullback sharply to 33,150 on the 24th of January, and they made this wedge for, a, a pattern I call the falling axe formation, lower highs and much low lows, and finally find some support rallies, and it tries to take out that resistance line, Chapman made inside track repellent line, and it does for a day. It goes above it at 35,824 on the, what was it, about the 8th or so, the 8th of Feb. And then comes right back and then takes out the support of the 200 period moving average, makes this arch formation, the one I call the dreaded H, because it took out the left side low. But look what it did. It made a, a beautiful trap wave green Roman candle at a low rather than at highs where we're looking at, um, uh, I'll show you that in a moment, the, the equivalent, but the negative one at a high. And the rule of thumb says, if there is a green, Chapman Wave Roman candle, remember Roman candle, I'm talking about uh, candles candles that uh, your light and fireworks and they, they explode. Well, what happens on this side is if there is a close within two bars above the high of that particular day, I might have to just change the mouse, yeah, that day, then what you're looking at is a chance that the support level is the candle, because it's a green candle, the open, which was at 32,830, becoming key support, even if there's a move up, and it usually could be very positive. Well, it was positive because four days it went sideways and then it broke to that 34,179 high, and then it pulled back, and what did it go to? 32,578. So it did. It went just a, a, a tad below the 32,000 um, open of 32,830. And then what happened is it went sideways and finally broke out. But I love this. Look at the pattern from the 5th of January to the 8th of February, and look at the breakout on the 16th of March. So you can see the equilibrium, the, the number of bars on the left side to that high, and then the number of bars to that high with a breakout, that was really important to me because it said two things. One, is this, this rally from where we went along, that was Tuesday morning, uh, pre-market, we went along the Dow, we've been long other positions, but we added that long position to the Dow, and we hadn't been long for a little while. And we have a call long way back from uh, April the 4th of uh, 2020 that we've kept um, as, a, as a core position, but this is, we've been in and out of diamonds long and the DOG short, for, for quite some time. Now, what's really important is that I anticipated that we would stall at the Chapman Wave inside track 
right here. This is the daily chart of the Dow on the left, around about the 33,850 to 950 area. But instead, what happened was Thursday, there was a very strong session, a continuation pattern of this leg C in the Chapman wave. And in the Chapman wave, if a buy signal gets upgraded to a buy mode, immediately you would think that there would be at least four higher peaks. That's your obligation in the Chapman wave methodology to go to a D if you get a buy signal minimum of a fourth highest peak. Ha ha. So now we've got something very interesting. This rally on Thursday closed above the 200 period exponential moving average and you can see it's like a sine wave it goes up and then down and back up and it keeps swinging around this level the big question for me is was this a, a more serious buy signal to buy mode in the daily that's going to translate in fact in the weekly i haven't even got a buy signal confirmation yet it's just a nice big can green candle from last week going to what was let me show you this one now. This is very important to me. I'm going to move that there. And I'm going to expand. This is the weekly chart. I'm expanding it. Look out. This was just fantastic support. And then it broke down to 33,150 the week of 28th of January. Went above it as support. And it broke down. And now it's become resistance. We're back in the resistance twofold. Because there's a trend line to the downside. And you've got this slightly rising one, about six or eight degrees. No, it's about six degrees. Um, rallying, and now we've broken it. And the MACD has started to see the histogram improve, but it's still negative. Stochastic is still negative at 29%. It just flipped positive, And the on-balance volume has turned up. So in a sense, we've got some technical aspects that are positive. But that pink nine-period moving average under the 14 still not good. And the monthly chart I showed my subscribers over the weekend in my market overview was about an hour long. Um, I spent a lot of time going through all these different charts, plus a particular chart that uh, a little later this week we'll probably be able to get to showing what I'm looking at for the big picture. But most importantly, what I had said was in the Dow, moving so strongly back above the nine period moving average, but all of this is going on. I mean, Crude oil, we go through that in a moment. Crude oil soaring and then pulling back just a little bit and now still back, very strong triple digits. Um, you've got interest rates pushing higher. You've got, I don't even want to talk about what's going on in Ukraine. Um, the, the implications here are extremely negative. And as a result, what we are looking at is any rally at this particular point, we just have to put on a back burner that's starting to move towards the front burner, or maybe it's the front burner going to the back burner, whatever it is. But it's only the start of something that we have to follow with a lot of uh, trepidation. That's really the word, trepidation here. So fabulous action, fabulous action today. We should actually be, the, the futures technically should be down 28 to 33 points. The E-mini, the Dow futures should be down about uh, 220 to 240, and we're not. The Dow futures are down 37. Uh, yeah, Dow futures are down 37, and the E-mini futures are down a quarter point. After everything we've just seen, I'll be back in a moment. This is Market Kickoff, Tommy O'Brien's show. I'm filling in the hour because he's not able to make it. Um, I can't do the fundamentals as he does, so I'm just doing a technical analysis, and we'll be back in a moment. Love to take your calls, 877 -97. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today.
tfnn.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Hi folks, we're back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. It's not uh, a market kickoff show in any way because I cannot do the fundamentals as he does it, but I can do the technicals. So let's do the technicals. And we're talking about uh, the Dow, a very nice move to the upside. I can't believe that we're looking at the Dow futures only down 36, S&P futures down a quarter after all the bad news. But uh, uh, someone has said in the den, um, uh, Muhammad al Arian, uh, who's always quoted in the CNBC, is a really good analyst uh, with big picture. But he said um, on CNBC, lighten up on growth on this bounce. I, I don't, I can't question that because I also, um, we, we are only long, we have no short positions, but we are being very selective here. So I don't disagree with the concept, but I think. One, something I spoke about Friday, but I'm going to mention it again, markets get very bored with repetitive news. It's just an amazing thing that at a certain point, uh, while the general public is starting to get all fervent about whatever the issue is, the market says, ho-hum, I've got something else to look at. I'm done with this. I'll be back. But right now, I'm just done for it. And that's exactly where I think we are right now. In a sense, the market's done with the worrying in the context of the war, but it's not done in worrying about what is working and why it's working. And look at this, as I said to subscribers the other on Saturday, my over my very long overview uh, webinar uh, video. Sorry, look at the steel stocks. Look at the Van Eck Vector steel ETF. So let me just do this very quickly. I, I did it during the. Um, um, the nine o'clock news hour. But let me just do this. The Dow closed at a high on Friday. Well, there were a bunch of things going on. And you would think that because it was influenced by um, the the options expiration on Friday, monthly options expiration, because it was influenced by the rebalancing coming up at four o'clock, because it was influenced by just it seemed like a little window of opportunity in, in, in the um, Russia-Ukraine war. Now, this is very interesting because you cannot really call it a war. It's an invasion. I still haven't read anything about the Ukrainians uh, sending over bombs or rockets or anything into Russia. 
So it's really extremely one-sided. I mean, you have to wonder, what is NATO? What is the United Nations? Why doesn't the United Nations ever do anything? Why aren't they there yelling and screaming and saying, humanitarian, um, what, what, you know, they're nothing, nothing. So that's very disappointing to me. So what I want you to do is to say, let's just look at the market, because the market is basically telling us something. Oh, look at that. Just missed a, a nice buy signal because I was yakking away and I was just about to do that. So you've got leg D in the two, one minute E mini chart right there. Uh, but the uh, 10 minute chart looks like it's a big arch formation about to do a retest at the 4460 area, it's at 4455. All right, we're back. We go straight back to our market. So what we're looking at here is that, and this is very interesting because if you go to Investors Business Daily, they they call this, um, let me just go to all right here, um, market trend. Look, here's market trend, and they say market trend Market in confirmed uptrend, NASDAQ follow through provides bullish sign as some growth stocks pick up steam. So um, they have all these different measures and they look at volume, they look at the volume on the third or fourth day, etc. This is a very nice breakout as far as they're concerned. I have a little different perspective in the sense that I need to keep watching that monthly chart because Look, the Dow futures are now down 42. The S&P cash, look at this. The S&P cash monthly chart. Now, you remember I spoke about that green Chapman Wave Roman candle at a low and what happens if it goes above for two sessions, how the, the Roman candle open becomes the support level. It might take it up, and if it doesn't break it significantly, it can continue going up which it did, but now look at the S&P. This is a Chapman Wave right here. I'll do this, and I'll expand this nicely here. Open, 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 there it is. That is just a perfect Chapman Wave Roman candle. Where? At the very high of the market, 48.18.62. January is high. And we were looking at this and saying, wow, everything about this theoretically based on all the other indices says that this, surely, how can this be a peak B when in the Chapman Wave methodology, when you get a buy signal, going to a buy mode, which this is in the monthly chart from the low of 21.91.86, the 20th of uh, March of uh, at that low, you would expect this as a D. That means we've had every single candle except for this one tiny little candle right here, and that was September or well, October. October of 2020, which had a slightly lower peak, therefore it becomes a peak A, and a higher low, and it couldn't wait. The very next month, November, breaks out to a new recovery high, all-time high, and it goes above this very long-term Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Look at the MACD, the way the MACD is so strong. Now the MACD is turned down, but it's still a very narrow opening uh, as opposed to right here with the MACD expanded sharply and then plunged. And that was a 35% decline from February to March of 2020. So this is very different because Chapman Wave Roman candle, that means it opens, makes a fraction, opens at a high, makes a fractional that you need the wick to light the wick, a little tiny wick, makes a long-legged doji candle um, to the downside, a long candle that is, and then clo closes way off the wick that hit the 14 period moving average, halfway to two thirds above the low. That's what's, that's the Chapman Wave Roman candle. The next month, February, is almost the same thing, but the wick is too big. But it, it, everything about it, everything else about it says, yep, Roman candle. And we've gone below it intramonth, and now we're back uh, almost, um, the open of this month was at 40, 5, 19.57. I mean, that's that's way high. That's 50 points from where we are, 500 Dow points. So all I can say is that it, with all the bad news, this is fantastic action. All right. That doesn't mean to say it has to keep going up. It doesn't mean to say it has to keep going down. It just says at this particular moment at 9.25 a.m. Eastern Time on the 21st of March, 2022, this is the candle we're looking at, and so far it looks fabulous when you consider what's going on. Month, weekly chart, 
fabulous, but that's not good enough. It's above the 14 period moving average, but the nine hasn't been able to cross above it. That's good, not good. QQQ NDX 100 trading right now at um, 350.45, down a dollar four. See, this is where I would agree with Al Arian. I would say that within the context of the different sequences we're looking at, the sequence of the NASDAQ 100, the NDX 100, tumbling from a high of 408.71. Now I think it's time to type it in right here. I'll put it in over here. 408.71. And that was on 11, that was the week of 11. I think it was 25, let's make it 23. Uh, 22, uh, November. And what we're looking at is, that is quite a tumble. And that tumble is essentially saying that this is a bounce within the context of the cycle. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Market has just opened. Bowser Trap is sitting in for Tommy O'Brien's hour, and uh, we're looking at the Dow. Uh, let's just do this now quickly. The Dow is down 53 at 34,007. Fabulous action so far. The day hasn't even begun. It's it's still so early. But considering what happened Thursday and Friday, not Tuesday and Wednesday, but Thursday and Friday, closing at highs, both um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, uh, 
not to be down 250 points right now. It could still do that, but not to not to be doing it at this point just speaks to this extremely oversold condition that we are in right now. So let's just do this real quickly because there's so much that I want. I had oh, just a ton of questions came in. I'm going to deal with them all. So the S&P, did it make a new recovery high? 44.65.40. Yes, it did because the high on Friday was 44. 0.6540. We did it. We did it by 20 cents. That's okay. This extends leg C. In the chapter methodology, as long as you make a higher high, the leg continues. Remember, it's called a floating letter, and it becomes a peak as soon as you make a lower high. Doesn't matter whether it's the one minute chart, the one minute chart, or the, uh, there it is, trying to go to the left side high that was made right there at uh, 5 o'clock on the uh, 22nd, so that's 5 a.m., uh, no, 17, that must not be, that must be 3.20. Uh, what was yesterday? Today's the 21th. Ah, that was last night. It must be 6 o'clock. Okay, so that is the high that we're looking at. Oh, that was the close on Friday. I remember now. The close on Friday, uh, we're looking at 44.65, and we're looking at 44.56, 57. Yep, we're going towards it. Oh, this is such good action. Can't believe it. Okay, so now what, what I'm looking at in terms of, let me just click on that. Okay, what I'm looking at in terms of the S&P is that the MACD and the daily is so strong. The stochastics at 88%, I love over 80%. On balance volume is actually acting like a V-shaped pattern. Good, but not great. The relative strength has been climbing all uh, for a week and a half, and that's good. The weekly chart, says there's a lot of work to be done to get that, that nine period differential in the MACD to cross over the 14 period, the, the red, uh, 26 period exponential moving average. And as I say, we did the monthly chart. I don't want to do that again. I just wanted to say the QQQs have come back a little bit. Now they're only down 80 cents at 350.67. Uh, this is a brand new A because it made a lower low. So you have to start the whole process again. The dreaded H pattern took out the left side low of the 24th of Feb. 318.26, ran up, turned around about, uh, what was that? That was about March the 5th, comes back down and makes a lower low on uh, Monday. Monday, 317.45, Tuesday, nice rally, and then it rallies and it closes above the arch high. That's always a really good sign above the, thir the 3rd of March high of 350.04. Looking at the IWM, now I'm so fascinated with the IWM. The Russell 2000 up 30 cents at 207.58. It has gone nowhere, but it did not break down like the others because it made this H pattern, which went to a lowercase m, and now it's having a third rally in this rectangle formation. And it's saying, you know, why are you ignoring me? I'm the small caps, and I'm doing darn well when you consider what everything else, what everything else that's going on, um, but at the same time, I'm not showing the kind of strength that says I'm leading, <laughs> and it will do that if it can cross and close above the 200 period moving average of 211.97. It starts trading any day this week in the 213.70 or higher area. It says, "Aha! Now you know where there's a place to hide in this particular market if you're nervous about other things, because." The small caps are actually participating now much better. They've held well. You know, so, so many times you, you think of a market going down, going down. You, what you say is, oh, anything that's held well is going to scream when the market comes back. And the market comes back and it's still holding well, but it's not breaking out. Because it's selectivity. It is the tide. You have to look at each particular sector and say, is it coming from low tide, going on its way to a high tide, or is it still in low tide with just these little uh, aberrational waves that look uh, on the surface as if the tide is going one way, but in fact, it's going another way. And that's really what we're looking at. Now I want to get to gold. I want to wait until the open. The open says we're down five at 1923. My suspicion is that gold had a massive move. It is still in play because it's, it's an it's a yellow icon of geopolitical fear. That gold, gold uh, um, icon is where money geopolitically always flows when there's some kind of uh, some kind of turmoil that has the potential to lead to serious repercussions. And that's kind of what we're looking at. Looking at silver, 
Silver is also um, just holding steady. It's actually up 10 cents at 26.18, holding a little better than gold, but I think also in a consolidation phase. High grade copper holding very nicely, not breaking out, not breaking down, but holding okay at uh, 4.69. If it's able at all to get to 4.8 or higher, that's going to be great. If it pulls back under 4.57, something like that, says, uh-oh, stuck in a range for a little while longer. We're also looking at the dollar, the dollar which has held very well considering it was a leader going to the upside because it, it is the currency of favor. It is the currency that has the greatest um, veracity for international trade. So the dollar is holding very well. It's not breaking out, not breaking out. It's having a high level consolidation basically between 90, I'd say between 99 and 97.50. And we're looking at uh, the VIX index, VIX.x. The VIX index pulling back. Um, now it's down a penny at 23.86. This arch formation says within the rectangle, you can get a move going to the upside in a shorter time frame that probably go to peak A, then a peak, if it's a stair step move, peak D, peak, and at D, it'll probably be just under or right on or just above the previous high. This guy said he had 8.94, but no, what it did is it did that in a shorter time frame. It did that in the 120 minute chart. It went in this rectangle formation and went to peak A, B, C, another A, B, C, D. It went to a peak E and it stopped just underneath the previous high, 38.94. It stopped at 37.79. So it's got the arch formation, which says the 200 period moving average of 22.88 is going to be key for the VIX index. Remember, this is the one that is based on market fear. This is really market fear. And as a measure right now, it's saying, I, I, I'm not close in fear to the 37, 38 level. I am holding still in the 20s at 23. That means that fund managers are still buying me for security, but I'm not a trend in this particular case. On the upside, I'm a trend more to the downside giving some support to the market. Dow's up 32, S&P's up 15. Oh, what a resilient market this is. Um, now, a couple of things I want you to do is the TLT. This is bonds. The TLT right now is down again, down almost two points at 131.49. Look at this. China rally couldn't fill the gap. It's towards the low of the range. I, yeah, yeah. I showed this to subscribers over the weekend. I'll do it right now because it was important. Oh, if I can just do that. Oh, we've got a break coming up. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. Uh, this is the uh, market kickoff hour. But of course, uh, I'm giving it a different viewpoint since I don't do the fundamentals as well as or at all uh, like Tommy O'Brien. So I'm doing the technical side. And you look at this chart as soon as we return with my triple yield. Uh, are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are Designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi folks, we're back. This is uh, Basil Chapman singing for Tommy O'Brien. Let's get all the questions that we're looking at. Let me just show you this right here. So this is the triple yield chart. Look at this. We're in a leg C in the weekly chart. It, we hit a 25.41, 2.51, uh, 2.541 uh, yield in the 30 year. Look at this. The, the blue, is that blue above the, oh, you can't have that, surely. You can't have the five year above the 10 year. No way. No, you can't. Uh, so we're looking at the five-year. Um, so the 10-year, let's go do that first. 22.07, what we close is 22.32. And the five-year is 22.27. I mean, that's like, uh, I mean, talking about flattening the curve. Oh, 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 oh. And look at the weekly um, iShares of the Wood Global Timber and Forestry ETF up in uh, recovery high here. Not all-time high, but at 92.78, 98.98 was the all-time high. And that was May, was it? What was that? That was, yep, May of 2021. And look at the uh, um, HGX, the Philadelphia Housing Index. Oh, what an interesting market. What a fascinating market. So let's just close this workspace. I don't want to overdo my charts right now. Okay, so here come the questions. Let me say, first one was Facebook. Oh, and this is the... Um, uh, Baba is, is trading down a little bit, down 274, bumped into resistance. Uh, Facebook was a question. Let me do this with Chapman Wave Automated uh, Support Resistance Levels. So Facebook's down three. It hit the 210.54 is the, uh, was the resistance down support. It's gone above that. Let me do it in the white background chart. I prefer to look at that. Um, so you've got Facebook. A uh, question just as I was typing this in. Uh, yes, happy birthday, Tommy, for yesterday. Um, so STLD, which is Steel Dynamics, and I was talking about the steel stocks. Look at this breakout to the upside, 86.40, up 2.19. That's, I believe, an all-time high. Is that an all-time high? Um, yes. Oh, oh, wow. Is it an all-time high? It is definitely an all-time high because this has had huge moves before, but uh, this is a fantastic move. And this is saying to you, Regardless of what you read, there are areas that are moving, and steel stocks can't just be moving because there's a bit of a shortage somewhere in the world. They've been moving uh, since, in fact, they just continued to move with a digestive phase in 2021 and a breakout phase in 2022, but before the war started, was breaking out. So is this part of the economic news that we're looking at here in the United States? That's going to be very interesting. All right. We've got that. We've got that. Uh, Facebook was a question. Facebook, um, a nice takeoff uh, from the low that was. Was it Larry? Larry was talking about Facebook. I think it was Larry. Was it Larry? It was said Facebook's going to have a have a good rally. I think Bravo, great call because it's gone from the 180. Uh, 
uh, what was that low? 180 double bottom low, triple bottom, quadruple bottom low in the 185 area. And now it's trading. It hit on Friday to 218. The uh, high was 216.80. And today is, uh, it's trading down four at 212. So I think that this is a, a really good takeoff. But I think there's going to be a lot more time needed for Facebook to get and to even consider breaking into and closing the gap that was made on 248 round number high on the 3rd of February. And just the day before, it was trading at 320. Oh, what a move. And uh, so before it can get to the 240 area, it's got a lot of work to do. Our next question came up. Let me just see if I can get. Yeah, Berkshire Hathaway, B R K dot B. I looked at this chart over the weekend and I thought, that is amazing. And this tells you about what's going on in the economy. And I think that's why copper has held so well. Mr. Copper or Dr. Copper, whatever they call it, internationally, copper has held well. And Wood, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, has, has held extremely well. And Berkshire Hathaway is a, is a benchmark of the U.S. economy because he is. He has not just the stock, but he owns companies in the United States from insurance to oil to um, you name it. He's, in, you know, he's just there. So Berkshire Hathaway making an all-time high as we speak. Um, this is the B shares at 347.55, uh, an incredible move up. And that you could not see the core economy. I, I know there's a company here. Jordan's, it's a furniture place. We've watched it for, for decades because I, I think one of our kids went to school with, um, with uh, one of the kids, the Jordan kids, I don't know. But they, they were bought out by um, Buffett, and they've continued to expand, and they, have, they, just, they do really well. And um, so he's, and that's furniture. So he's everywhere. And I say, as a, a benchmark of the economy, as a benchmark of the international respect for our economy based on the dollar having held so well, I think that if we can just w go through the weeds here, there's a lot happening that is way more positive than one would expect. Yeah, yeah, this is stock that we missed by a dollar or something uh, three, four, uh, about a week ago. Uh, Jacobs Engineering. Look at this, almost at an all-time high. Jacobs Engineering. I mean, look at this beautiful left side, right side, Chapman wave price movement uh, going towards the 143.82 high of the 5th of January. That was the last time. All-time all high is 149.55 back in November. You could. This can't happen unless there's something that is positive in the economy. So all I'm saying is I'm trying to separate the wheat from the chaff, as they say, or the news or bad news from the good news. And I think this is part of the good news, right? There's a lot of bad news. Uh, next question was, could I look at, oh, oh, oh. Could I look at, am I going to be able to get this? I think it was team. Yes, team. One of my favorites. Why? Because when I was in Australia a few years ago, visiting my brother, he had some friends over for dinner. And we were sitting around the table and just in conversation, uh, the, the other couple there said, oh, yeah, yeah, our son, Australian, uh, our son is uh, uh, living in Brooklyn. It turns out he's living like a block or two away from where my son lives. And what, And they said, oh, he works for this uh, Australian company. Um, uh, uh, and as they said that, they never even finished the sentence. I said, team, right? I, I can't remember the name, Atlassian uh, Corporation. Yes, yes, they said. And he's gone there to work. So um, that was, what, three years ago? Let me just go back three years ago. Was that, uh, when, were the, when were the big fires? 20, oh, last year. No, the year before. Was it last year in January? Or whatever it is. We were there and during the big fires. And... Um, yeah, I came back and I looked and look at this thing. This has gone from about 100 back in 2020 and it ran all the way to 400 and what it was, 483.13 on the 29th of, of October 2021. And then had a little bit of a pullback to uh, the most recent low in the 230 area, straightening right now 288. So this fits exactly the area that says there could be a bounce. But this is where I'm saying it needs more time. I probably would like to see it go sideways and build a base 
and then it can start its next big move. So this fits right into the category, I'd even put it into the category of Amazon, uh, which is now up $1.93. It's right on the 200 period moving average, can't get out of its own way. Oh, could be a Roman candle. We'll be watching this one, green one in, in the uh, in the monthly chart. Yeah, so as a trade, I think maybe, but as a position play, I think it's gonna need more time. Team Atlassian. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, last few minutes of the show for Tommy O'Brien. I believe he'll be back tomorrow. I just couldn't make it today. We're looking at CF uh, Industries, uh, hydrogen, nitrogen, uh, trading at 101.33, up 6.08, breaking out. This is really good news. The other one was CLF. Uh, there are a whole bunch of questions coming in. I'll deal with it in the, the next show, my Tiger Technicians Hour. But just let's say that to see the Dow now is back down 86 at uh, uh, 34,671, and the S&P is down 5.71. You, that's the kind of action you would have expected today after a spectacular move on on Thursday and Friday, closing at the highs. So there's nothing here that is in, in, in incongruent. You just this is what you'd expect. So CLF is Cleveland Cliffs flat roll steel. Now there are a couple of things we want to look at here, but I do want to talk just briefly about the TLT, which is trading down a dollar eighty four one thirty one sixty, and that says that no matter what the Fed says, the reality is that rates are higher. They are higher, but the ten year is the one that is fixed, that's kind of what many, many uh, instruments, that's what things are pegged at to the 10-year. And as a result, what we're looking at is the 10 and 5-year are so close together 
Uh, why would anyone want to go to a 10 if they can go to a 5? shorter period and just almost is within pennies of the same uh, interest rate. So this is going to be very interesting. Uh, and the market really needs a digestive day today. I prefer it. It did make higher highs. So we're going to be following that. whole bunch of questions about um, stocks we're going to get to in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour, coming up in a few moments. Um, so I thank you very much, Tommy, for not letting me come in at this hour. And what we are looking at is a market that has had a spectacular move off lows on a percentage basis, the Dow went down 12%. On Friday's close, it was down only 6%. With all that's going on, is this just the start of a big move to the downside? Or is this telling us that if you are selective and you're able to go to the right areas, you can survive this quite well? And in some cases, even make money if like the steel stocks moving so nicely. So um, I'm going to just wrap it up here. Other than to say uh, the VIX index we were looking at earlier on. Now it's a little bit better than it was. It's up 55 cents to 24.42. Watch this closely. Since late through the day, it is a sell-off. If VIX doesn't go above 25.10, it actually is holding the 24s. He said um, it's, a, it's a technical seller rather than the emotional one that says, what's fixed, extremely high, Marcus plummeting. Have a wonderful day. I'll be back.